How can God command genocide? There are a few passages in the Old Testament of the Bible where God seems to be telling his people to kill whole cities. The first thing we have to do is to keep in mind the big picture of the Bible. And the overarching message of the Bible is that God desperately loves his people and is longing for them to stop hurting themselves and each other and come back into relationship with him. We also need to understand the historical background of the Old Testament. War, whether we like it or not, was part of the cultural landscape back then. But it's important to note that the biblical view of war is incredibly countercultural. So there's a book in the Old Testament called Deuteronomy, and in Deuteronomy 20, it lays out some laws about war. It says that law should only ever be the last resort. And within these rules, there's compassion for those who don't want to fight, for those who've just recently bought a house or a vineyard, for those who are engaged to be married, and even for the faint-hearted. There's even concern over preserving the trees in war. God is countercultural throughout the whole Bible, in what would have been a male-centered, macho society that championed the strong, the good-looking, and the remarkable. God uses nobodies, and he champions the widows, the homeless, and the children. We also need to look at these passages in the context of judgment. When someone has done something to hurt us, we want justice. Deuteronomy 20 verses 16 to 17 talks about completely destroying certain nations, but the very next verse explains why. The surrounding nations practiced horrific things like child sacrifice. What if God didn't care that they were sacrificing their children? Is that the kind of God that we want to follow? If he didn't judge this behavior, could he be a God of love? In the Psalms in the Old Testament, the thought of judgment is an occasion for joy. Look at Psalm 96 verse 13. Judgment was welcomed, not feared by those who suffered. Judgment is seen as a good thing. While God commanding war seems awful, there are a few things that we have to consider. God gave them time to repent. Back in Genesis in chapter 15, we hear of the sin of the Amorites. God had been patiently waiting for them to turn away from their awful behavior for centuries. This wasn't just a whimsical burst of anger. And God uses our methods. When we're in different situations, we adapt the way that we speak, the way that we dress. I listen to Stormzy with my teenagers, but I wouldn't dream of playing his music in front of my grandma. Sometimes the only way to reach people is to speak their language. And God is speaking to his people in a way that they would have understood. He's using the language of war. It's also important to note that these wars happen within a very limited and specific time frame. It's also important to note that the casualties might have been predominantly military. In early Hebrew, the word for thousand is identical to the word for fully armed soldier. And we know for a fact that Jericho was a military fort, so it's likely that most of the people killed at least in this battle in Joshua 5 were soldiers. We also need to consider language. If I say of Manchester City playing Manchester United, we smashed them, or I tell you, go break a leg, you understand that I don't literally mean what I'm saying. I don't want you to literally break a leg. They're rhetorical devices, similar to what would have been used in ancient times around war. Even within the Bible, we see that people who've been completely annihilated appear later in the passage. Look at Joshua 10 verses 36 to 7 and Judges 1 verses 10. And in Deuteronomy 7 verses 2, it commands, destroy them totally. And yet in the very next verse, it says, don't intermarry. So it's clear that there would still have been lots of people left within that city. In the book of Jonah, we see that the people of Nineveh are super corrupt and they deserve to be punished. But God sends Jonah to Nineveh to warn them and God begs them to repent and to turn back to him. But Jonah doesn't want to warn Nineveh. He thinks that they deserve to be punished because of the things that they've done. Once Jonah's run away, got himself stuck in a well and come back to see God forgive Nineveh, he says this in Jonah 4 verses 1 to 2. God, I knew it. When I was back home, I knew this was going to happen. That's why I ran off to Tarshish. I knew you were sheer grace and mercy, not easily angered and rich in love, and ready at the drop of a hat to turn your plans of punishment into a program of forgiveness. The words I knew it in that verse are really important. God obviously had a reputation for loving people who didn't deserve it. Jonah was angry because God was too merciful. 
There is judgment in the Old Testament and there's some really difficult passages, but God's judgment always goes hand in hand with his forgiveness and his mercy. We see this ultimately fulfilled at the cross of Jesus, where Jesus takes the judgment that we deserve and in his mercy we are free.